Hello everyone and welcome to the Anatomy of Knitting episode 10. My name is Erin, excuse me, pick <laughs> up there and I'll be your host. Today is December 10th, 2015 and I'm coming to you from Cork, Ireland. I'm an American expat living here with my family. Well, let's see, I have got a very small amount of knitting to show you. I've got uh, a lot of sewing to show you. You can kind of see it peeking out there. And so I'm expecting this podcast to be a little bit short, but I'm getting a podcast out there. <laughs> I had a little bit better light. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, it is currently a partly cloudy day here. Um, we've had several horrible days of windstorms. You've probably seen that, um, that weather reporter. I think her name is Teresa. I don't know what her last name is. Um, doing one of those weather reports from, from Ireland, from, I think she was up in Galway and she's very, she's very dramatic, but if you're stuck in the weather here that, you know, that we've had for the past few days, or actually more for like the past week, um, you would be like she is too. <laughs> we had a very awful windstorm yesterday and, uh, thankfully it's done. Everything is still right now. And sir, please do not. I've been having issues with cats just demanding to be here, so I'm just, come on, come on. Thank you. Like getting all, getting all in my grill and clawing me, so. <laughs> you know, with the kneading. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, we can review. We are getting ready for our visit with our grand, the, the, my family that's coming. Uh, my mother, father, and uh, brother are coming for the holidays and to spend birthday with the boys. They're arriving Saturday, so we're in the final, the final days of trying to get everything finished. Um, let's see, Tuesday I did the whole bathroom cleaning hatefulness. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you hate to clean bathrooms. Then uh, yesterday was the floor cleaning day, and I did an epic floor cleaning with the steam cleaner and the vacuum cleaner and just everything. Um, I still have to do the top floor uh, for the boys' room and uh, the room that my brother's going to be staying in. And uh, yes, yeah, so uh, that's on the, the docket after I finish uh, podcasting. Darling. I need you to go. Thank you. Stay right there. Thank you. Perfect. <sighs> it's like they hear me talking and they magically have to come investigate. <laughs> so, yes. Family gets here Sunday. It's Thursday. The boys are at school. Um, I am. You'll notice that I am adorned with um, car stickers. <laughs> um, I'm in the process of trying to figure out the best way to drop them off at school. They're very, you know, they spend a lot of their time with me, and when when I drop them off, it's it's very dramatic. And I've tried doing the, you know, well, mommy's not going to be home today. You need to stay here so mommy can, uh, you know, run her errands, that kind of thing. Um, mommy's going to sewing school, which which I go to I go to a quilting class on Mondays, and that's become no drama. But that's because they're staying here with my husband. They're not going to the school. But they've been going to they've been going to their crush um, on Thursdays for gosh I think we're I think we're we are over a year oh, excuse me I want to say they started in like July so it's, it was a year July uh, it might have been August we'll see uh, I'll have to I'll have to look back into the uh, into the records and find out so yeah that's just been that's just been challenging, the drop-offs. And so I'm, I've been trying to do things that I think may help, um, may help them feel, feel comforted. Um, so we played with stickers this morning. We played with Legos a little bit this morning. Um, but there was still drama when I dropped them off. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it hasn't gotten to the point, um, I want to say about three or four weeks ago, it was so bad that that I had to carry Malcolm in horizontally under my arm. And when it came time to actually leave, I had to physically peel him off of me. Um, thankfully, that has only happened that once. Um, they usually, you know, they get upset, but they don't, they don't 
glom onto me and, and hold on as tight as they can. I part of me feels a little bit bad, but I know that being that being at school, being at the crash, um, their daycare is is good for them in the long run. Sweetie, please get off of my stuff. Thank you. <sighs> so, yeah, that's that's challenging. Um, let's see what else have we been doing this week. <sighs> we went to toddler group on Tuesday. We went to rugby tots on Sunday. Those are going well. Uh, I think that's about it. It's just been a hard week sharing. Um, Malcolm especially has just had, he's just had a difficult time with, not, well, he's, he's, he's good at when I ask, when, when Nate asks, which is usually me, like saying, okay, Nathaniel, how do we ask Malcolm nicely for a toy kind of like thing. Um, he's good at, at giving up toys for his brother, but I don't know, this week he just was really angry about 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 sharing. And and I I get that, you know. I kind of had this realization with I think it was with my mom, maybe uh on a call maybe about a week ago or so, you know, other than a few hours here or there, um, like when when Nathaniel has had to go to when he had to go into surgery Oh, excuse me. Or, or like when somebody has a doctor appointment and, and mommy takes one, one boy and daddy takes the other boy, um, they've been together their entire life, their entire existence. They've been together. I don't think they, they haven't spent a night apart and that just has to be, that just has to get hard after a while. And sometimes I can imagine sometimes you need a break. So I kind of figured that maybe that's part of it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's gotten a little bit better over the past day or so. Um, so any any tips, <laughs> especially moms of twins out there of, of this of this issue, just the you know like he would he would hit his brother. He would he would hit him with the object that whatever they were whatever they were talking about. And you know we've been trying timeouts and doing that kind of thing, but it's just it's just been hard. This week was hard. <laughs> I'll just say straight out hard. <laughs> um, let's see. I've got my berries tea. Take a sip. Let's get into the knitting. I have been working on this, the sheep hide hat. So there's that view of it. This is a design by Kate Davies. And the last time I showed you, I think I was, let's see, I was in these little triangle bits right here. I have since finished those. And I have actually moved on to starting the decreases. I'm working on those little ram's heads that you can see. Oh, this looks so good. It's so exciting to when things start like looking like something real. Um, and the light was so bad last week that this just, it didn't do it justice. So there's the hat. Um, I'm just about to finish the rams heads. And then you can see that the decreases are starting right here. Um, and if you hold the hat, you know, it is starting to, well, you can't really tell right now. Um, it is starting to, um, I think I've only made three decreases so far. Yeah, three, and then it looks like it's going to be a total of, well, a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to count them. So the, the decreases, just so you can't really see the chart very well there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got my hair up again. So like every time I try and try and try this on, you know, because I've got this ponytail bump, it just kind of looks, it looks silly. <laughs> uh, but now actually with it on. It does look like it's going to, I was a little concerned that it would be like, like it would be like that, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. <laughs> it just didn't look big enough. And I have a, I have a ginormous head. <clears throat> so I've got all these ends to deal with. Um, oh, and you probably want to see the, the insides. Yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, the floats are a little bit better up here. 
<sighs> That's mainly what I've been working on. Um, my evenings have been taken up by, uh, we've been working on our annual calendar that we save, that we send to families. And uh, yeah, so I've been working on that. Uh, this was a kit that I bought a few years ago from uh, Jameson and Smith. Um, it uses all of these different colors. So there's six, seven, seven skeins of yarn there. And then another two here. So it's a total of nine skeins. These are the two yarns that I'm working with now. Um, I am knitting that on the ribbing was done on US 1s, I believe, and uh, I think the hat is on US 3s. So that is pretty much all of my day. I don't even think I worked on the socks, um, and I showed you the sweater that I had finished last week. Um, I am still kind of brewing about what's going to be my next sweater. I'd really like to do um, another Amy Herzog design because it turned out really well and really flattering. Um, I am a big fan of the uh, what is it? The Knit to Flatter. Let me find the website. It's not Amy Herzog. It's a fit to flatter. Oh, it's the Custom Fit. That's what it is. Cuts because she's got Knit to Flatter, which is her book, and I believe the Craftsy class she has is also Knit to Flatter. Um, the Custom Fit is the um, program where you can go buy a pattern that's perfectly custom made for you because you input your measurements into the um, into the website and then um, you input your gauge swatch uh, measurements into the website and then it just <laughs> gathers all that information and spits at a, a pattern that's that's made just for you. Um, I just finished the acorn trail and um, was really pleased with how that turned out. So I'm just trying to figure out what my next project's going to be. It's either going to be that or um, I got that that nice purple alpaca yarn from um, when I went to Dublin in I guess it was September August or September and so I'm trying to find this nice little lacy cowl I'd like I'd like a, a big cowl out of that purple yarn uh, maybe something that I can kind of put over my head too if I really wanted to do they call that a snood I think I always wonder how they came up with snood <laughs> Um, so that's kind of percolating as well. Uh, yeah, that's it for the knitting. Nothing else. Um, so sewing is, is my big thing this week. Um, and I've got a lot to show you. Um, I've been doing a lot of handmade things for Christmas. And I've been kind of worried that I would be able to finish everything, but I did. Um, so that's good. Let me see what I can show you. Um, so I'm participating in a Christmas swap uh, with the Modern Irish Quilt Quilters group. Um, we are supposed to make um, either a mini mini quilt or a mug rug. Um, and I came up with this design. This is um, considered an Irish chain. And then um, I put these sawtooth stars in there. And I had this, I had this fat quarter bundle of fabrics that um, were Christmassy. It didn't include this, this stripe that I used on the, um, on the binding, um, but it included that green solid fabric and the peppermint candy fabric. Um, and then you can kind of see the quilting. There's spirals there. The back is this nice, fun little snowflake fabric. So that's my mug rug that I'm swapping. And then we were supposed to create a, um, a decoration, uh, which I didn't, I had read, but hadn't absorbed. And so um, I ended up making a, a bag because I thought a bag is cute and useful. And there's the inside. It's the, got the Christmas tree fabrics. Looks like I've got a little thread I have to trim there. But other than that, it is done. I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. I love how the treatment is for the corners here. Um, you create these tabs for the zipper pull, uh, which helps you to be able to turn the, the bag out so it's got very pointy corners because um, when you sew the side seams, you, so when you, when you prep the bag, you um, have the zipper pulls, uh, you have the zipper tabs about a quarter inch in from the seam. 
Um, and when you sew the seam, it's at a quarter of an inch, and but you make sure not to catch that little zipper pull. So technically, this top little part is not sewn together where the gray meets the, the Christmas tree fabric, um, but can't really tell. Um, I did, so these are all the fabrics from that fat quarter bundle that I was talking about. I've got the peppermint candies, the little snowflakes, there were a couple of cute reindeers, the Christmas trees, um, and then this, that stripey one is not from, from the fat quarter bundle. So I just made a little patchwork panel, did some top stitching, and um, now we've got a little bag. Uh, if you follow me on Pinterest, um, the I have this bag pinned. It's either going to be on my bags board or my finished project inspiration board. Um, <coughs> usually when I, when I complete things, I'll move it to that board um, just so it cleans up the board from, from when I'm trying to find something new I want to make. Um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be the swap. I'm going to put, include some chocolate and uh, hopefully, my, hopefully my partner won't mind that I made a bag instead of a decoration. I would be happy to receive that. <laughs> I'm sad I'm going to have to give it away. Uh, another thing that I finished in this past week is um, a, this is going to be a Christmas gift for my mom. So I hope my mom isn't really watching. But this isn't her main Christmas gift. Um, her main Christmas gift is something else. <laughs> this is just something. Um, so I don't know if I, remember, if I told you this, but um, I had to buy white fabric for Malcolm's quilt and there was a period of time for about a week that I didn't have any white fabric and I didn't actually have anything to do sewing wise um, I had because I'd wait I'd wait to get the white fabric um, so I ended up uh, making mini quilts for the boys lammies <laughs> just well I made one for Nate um, because I didn't I didn't have uh, the fabric I hadn't quilted I hadn't made Malcolm's well, yeah. So I, I didn't want to, I didn't know how much I'd use his fabric. You'll see. <laughs> I showed you Nathaniel's uh, Lammy's quilt. Um, it uses the fabric that I used to make his quilt. Um, so the farm theme. Um, and so I had a period of time where I had, I had like maybe a half of a yard of fabric and I needed, gosh, I think it was like four and a quarter yards for the project that I'm going to show you. So, um, I decided that I would make my mom an extra an extra Christmas gift. So this is what it is. I found um, a pin that uh, had these. So these are uh, Moda, I think they're candy squares. They're little pre-cut two and a half inch squares. Um, I put these on point, which basically means I sewed it like that so it was a it was a one and then you sew three and then you sew five and then on and on and on and then when you get to the end you you sew in these what are called setting triangles so here and here it's hard to do this backwards and here so those are all setting triangles which then puts the squares call on what's called on point so that's, uh, I think I used all but uh, one of those candy squares. Um, I think there's 36 in the main thing here, and then there's four um, in the corners. So there's that. And then I did, I quilted a, a feather in the border there. And then I did what I think is just called an orange peel. So I just did curvy lines around every, every corner and you can definitely tell that they are not perfect but that's okay I'm not worried about it I got an email in case you heard that <laughs> so there's that um, there's the backing fabric and this is all I want to say it's Somerset is the fa it's a fabric line by Moda I want to say it's Somerset but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that um, and it's just these nice florals, um, greens, pinks, blues, pretty. And this is all in the one one line. So um, the binding is is from the same line, and and the backing is. So I finished that. And let's see what else. There's some 
big stack here. I finished Malcolm's quilt. Um, it is 64 inches by 64 inches. I um, found a fat quarter group uh, when I went to London in the spring. Um, it was made out of these kind of spacey fabrics, which of course none of the ones that you can see there. there. So like these spacey type fabrics, this blast off fabric, the stars, um, this, well the binding is the stars too. <laughs> um, I, I had to add in a few fabrics. I had to get a total of 14 or 16 fat quarters. Um, so I think I added in this one. The stripey is one of the ones that came with the group. So basically, I, here we go. here's two more, or actually four more. So we got the planets over here, and the stripes, and the stars, and the rocket ships. And this pattern is called Fireworks. It's by Camille Ross Kelly. It, is, it makes a 64 by 64 inch quilt. Um, when you make the blocks, so basically what I did is I, out of the 16 fat quarters, I made eight pairs of two. Um, and you make basically the inverse of, of those blocks. So like, there's one block here that's got um, the, this kind of linen blue here and the stripes um, in the corners in the center. And then there's an opposite one where the linen blue is in the center in the corners and then the stripes are these, are these ones. That one's, that one's a crazy block. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's Fireworks by Camille Ross Kelly. Uh, I believe the blocks are 16 inches finished. Um, had to add in some, some uh, fabrics to make it all work. But thankfully I had enough in my stash that I could do that. I uh, did a simple meander as the quilting, and then I found this lovely Spaceman flannel back in the States when we went for a visit. Um, back in May to use as <laughs> I love the flannel backing it's just a nice it's just a nice touch um, I found this back in the States so yeah oh there's that stripey that crazy stripey one that I was talking about so yeah there's that inverse one Ooh, crazy um let's see I did I did manage to quilt this all in a day um, after I spoke to you last week and uh, I did machine binding. Um, I machine bind all the boys' quilts. I don't really like to do that one by, it's it's just a lot to do by hand. Um, and I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. Again, it's it's pretty big. It's, it's He's, Malcolm's definitely gotten the bigger quilt this year. So next year, it will be Nathaniel's turn. <clears throat> and they might actually have an opinion now. <laughs> or next year when, when I make their quilts. about like what kind of fabrics and stuff they want. So since I finished um, that, um, I had fabric left over. There were a lot of um, triangles left over from making from making this part of the block. This so it goes from to here to here to here. So that's all a component of that block and to make to make the corner here, you take a you take a bigger square, and you overlay it onto that part. So, um, and then you sew on on a seam, and then you cut it. So I had all these big kind of triangles about this size left over, and I thought, oh well, I might I might make something out of a of triangles. Um, but I've been playing with triangles a lot lately, and I decided I want something easy to do because I was running out of time because I lose access to my machine on Sunday. So I found, um, I'm, I'm subscribed to uh, the Fat Quarter Shop on YouTube, um, and like, they're kind of like uh, Missouri, Missouri Star Quilt Company, they put up quilt tutorials, um, and one that they put up this week, or in the past week, was um, one made out of, out of squares, and I want to say it's the No Bake Jolly Bar quilt. Let's see if that... I'm going to do a, sh a search. No bake. Jolly bar.
Yes, it is. It is the No Bake Jolly Bar quilt, and um, this is a free pattern that you can find on their website. It's super easy. I actually um, took that as my inspiration. Um, it's supposed to create a quilt that is 63 and a half by 81 and a half. Um, I did not do that because <laughs> this is this is Malcolm's Lammy's quilt. Um, so it's it has these little zigzags. And what I did is I I cut the block size in half. And then I just didn't do as many blocks as it called for. So it uses all those. So those are a lot of the space fabrics um, that are in the in the quilt. Actually, because you have to make um, the, I'm, I had to get pieces that were five and a half by two and a half. So that was the challenge to find fabric to find enough fabrics that I could do the five and a half by two and a half inch out of my scraps. So that's Lammy's quilt and it's also backed with the Spaceman. Um, I was careful on his quilt to have the Spaceman going in all those same directions but uh, because this is Lammy and Lammy is an inanimate object and does not have feelings, I didn't care about having all the Spacemen going one way. <laughs> they are they are going all one way on, on his quilt but it's, it's Lammy. It's Lammy. So there's Lammy's little mini quilt. Hopefully he'll, hopefully he'll like it. Hopefully they'll they'll think it's, they'll think it's cute. But that's not all. <laughs> I have one last thing. Um, I finished this yesterday. Uh, my brother is a big Doctor Who fan. You may remember that I made him a TARDIS quilt last year, and um, I may have shown you that I made him some TARDIS uh, pillowcases because I figured he needed. If he was going to have a TARDIS quilt on his bed, he needed pillowcases as well. Um, I had a lot of scraps left over because I insisted on um, having the TARDISes going the correct way, <coughs> which uses a, um, which can use a lot of fabric, but also has a lot of fabric waste. Um, and out of the fabric waste, I made a Christmas stocking. <laughs> and thankfully, well, if you hang it, the TARDISes are crooked, but up and down. Tardises are almost straight. <laughs> um, he is a fourth doctor fan, so I guess the fourth doctor has a vest that is made out of this plaid. Um, this fabric here on the cuff and this fabric here on the inside is um, from Spoonflower. Um, I had it printed. Um, this was the backing of his quilt, or this is the backing of his quilt. Um, this is um, this Born to Sonic. And uh, I made it. I made it so the sonic screwdrivers were all facing the same direction. So the top is up here, and, and the bottoms are down there. And I uh, did the same thing with the TARDIS fabric. They're all facing the same direction. And yeah, there's the cuff. Yeah, I guess that's his plaid vest. I think I'm gonna have to actually knit my brother a real Doctor Who scarf. He's got one that's that's been commercially made, so it's not. Um, I don't think it's too, I think it's stockinette stitch and not, um, not garter stitch. So I may have to do that for it for Christmas next year. We shall see, because that's a lot of knitting. <laughs> so there is the TARDIS stocking. And I've got all, I've got all of our, um, all of our Christmas stuff lined up, or all of our stockings lined up um, over there. So, yeah. Told you there was a lot of sewing compared to the knitting, and we're at about a half hour, which is um, pretty on par. I thought it was going to be a lot shorter. Um, I am going to let you go. Hope you have a good week. Um, the next two weeks, my family is going to be here. Uh, I think it was actually the next two Thursdays, my family is going to be here. Um, so I'm not going to podcast while they're here, I believe. Yep, uh, the 17th and the 24th, no podcasts. Um, but New Year's Eve, I should, barring any, like if my husband decides we have to go do something, um, because he, I think he might have the day off, maybe not, maybe not, um, so we'll see, <laughs> is basically what I'm saying about the 31st, um, but you definitely won't get podcasts the next two weeks. So I hope you have an excellent 
Christmas or other holiday that you celebrate. Um, I am excited for my family to get here and I'm excited to celebrate Christmas and birthday with the boys. Um, we have ordered a cake this year. It's going to be a Thomas cake because we're having a, a Thomas birthday. <laughs> They're getting a lot of um, Thomas toys and they're getting Thomas PJs from my mom, and it's just and Thomas slippers. It's just gonna be Thomas. It's gonna be like Thomas exploded in our house. So it should be fun. I'll take pictures and um, share those with you uh, at the end of the the next podcast. So have a happy holidays, and um, I shall see you on New Year's Eve. Hopefully, bye. <laughs>